anytime a new product comes out, it can sometimes be difficult to separate the hype from the reality. And one of the biggest claims with the Rodecaster Pro 2 is that you no longer need any kind of signal booster with it because it has something called revolution preamps, which are supposed to be revolutionary in terms of how clean the preamps are and how much gain you can get, how much clean gain you can get from them, virtually eliminating the need for a booster. So let's put that claim to the test and see if it's true with the Shure SM7B, which as I'm sure you might know, is typically regarded as a pretty quiet microphone that needs an extra boost to really sound its best. In the past, if you've gotten an SM7B and you've just plugged it into any kind of standard mixer, even the original Rodecaster Pro, for a lot of people you might feel like, this mic doesn't sound as good as I normally hear it sounding, I wonder why, and it's probably because you need a booster of some kind. Currently, I'm using the Earthworks Icon microphone, which is a condenser microphone. It's running off of phantom power, and you pretty much never need a booster with a condenser microphone because they're so sensitive and they have phantom power kind of giving them a boost. But with dynamic microphones, it's often a different story. So I've even made a video all about boosters before. There's things like the Cloud Lifter, which is a great one. The Fet Head has always been my personal favorite. And there's other cool stuff like the Clark Technic CT1, which is pretty affordable, and the Coda Stealth, which is specifically designed for the SM7B. And on other interfaces and mixers, this has introduced so much gain that like I barely had to put the fader up at all because it made things so, so loud. But Rode's claim here is that if you add a booster to your signal, you will actually erode the quality by introducing noise because the preamps are really that quiet. So for this video, I'm not going to have any background music in the back and I'm not going to do anything with the audio. It's just going to be the file straight from the Rodecaster synced up in Final Cut and that's it. So you can listen for yourself and see how it sounds. So right now I've got the SM7B connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2 and you can see it's not connected through any boosters or anything, just straight into channel one. And at 58 decibels, I'm getting a pretty healthy gain level. I am using the SM7B preset, which I'm going to turn off all of the processing. So right now, all that it's affecting is the gain level, which looks good. The Rodecaster Pro 2 <laughs> does go up to 76 deucibles of gain. But right now, I think 60, maybe even 58 where it was is pretty good for my voice and where I'm at right now. I don't need phantom power or anything like that. So when we switch over, this will just be the pure SM7B sound. So now I'm going to turn down this microphone. and bring up the SM7B right to the Unity mark. So this is the SM7B with no processing, just straight into the Rodecaster Pro 2. Hopefully if you're listening for noise, you somehow are able to differentiate line noise versus environmental noise, because I am just in a room. There's nothing crazy happening in here right now, like air conditioners or fans or anything. So hopefully you can make a decision on if you think that sounds good or not. Now, I am getting plenty of volume, plenty of gain out of this. I could boost the fader up even more, and then it's going to get even louder, potentially even start clipping. If I go back into this channel and I boost this all the way up, now we're at, whoa. I guess I could turn that down. This is way too loud. But now we're at 76 decibels. Whoa. With no, oh, wait, wait, I could do something stupid. Now I can do something really stupid. Anyway, wow, we're at 76 decibels, no boost or anything, and I can even push it a little bit further. I'm in my headphones definitely hearing a bit of noise, but I would never, ever, ever use the microphone with the setting. So let's go back down here to where things sound sort of sane, and then I will bring this back down to Unity, dial this in a little bit to where it's fitting my voice nicely, and there we go. So this is the SM7B, no processing and no booster. If I turn on processing, you can kind of hear how it changes the sound of the microphone. I really do like the SM7B preset in the Rodecaster Pro 2, and it does introduce the noise gate, which is a lot more effective than the original Rodecaster Pro. And in that case, if I stop talking, you can hear it does become pretty much silent after that because of the noise gate. So it's up to you to decide if you want to use that or not but I'm gonna keep processing off to keep things fair. So the next thing we're gonna do is connect a booster, which is what Rode says specifically not to do, but we're gonna see how that works. Now I do know to get the best, cleanest signal from a booster, you should connect it to the microphone, not the back of the mixer. Most of the time I run it into the mixer because I hate the way they look coming out of the back of microphones, but I will do everything I can to give this the best shot possible. So this is the SM7B with no booster at Unity on the Rodecaster Pro 2. And this is the SM7B running through the FET head 
at Unity on the Roadcaster Pro 2. So a couple of things to note here. One, at least in my headphones, I can hear more noise than before when it wasn't running through the Fethead. But interestingly, because the Fethead added so much gain to the channel, 76 decibels plus like 26, well over 100 decibels of gain now, I had to turn this way, way down to 22 decibels before it just like destroyed my ears and damaged my hearing a little bit. What's interesting to me is that at 22 decibels, at a much, much lower level of gain, there's more signal noise in the chain that we have gained. If I boost this back up to 58, oh, I don't want to even do that. This, oh, this just sounds terrible, but this is where it was without the booster. And obviously there's a ton of noise which is annoying. So let's go back down. I think it's, my gain level is pretty much correct right around here, 23-ish decibels. So again, this is the SM7B with the Fethead running into the Rodecaster Pro 2 at 23 decibels of gain. And this is the SM7B running directly into the Rodecaster Pro 2 with no signal booster at 58 decibels of gain. With no processing, of course. So again, what I'm actually finding interesting even more than I expected is not only is this quieter, but it's quieter at a higher gain level. So 58 decibels versus 23 decibels, this is quieter than with this. So it seems like Rode's claim really does stack up that signal boosters introduce noise into the signal. And if you didn't SM7 believe it before, hopefully you believe it now. Just for the sake of science, let's try the other boosters and just see how they sound. I'm just going to switch them out and you can hear samples. This is the SM7B running directly into the Rodecaster Pro 2 with no signal booster at 58 decibels of gain. This is the SM7B with the FET head running into the Rodecaster Pro 2 with the gain level set to 23 decibels. This is the SM7B running into the Clark Technic CT1. I had to boost the gain to 28 decibels to keep my level, and this is how much noise there is here. This is the SM7B running into the Coda Stealth. I had to lower it down to 26 decibels of gain to keep a good level, and this is how much noise there is with the Coda Stealth. And now this is the SM7B running through the Cloudlifter CL2 into the Rodecaster Pro 2 at 25 decibels of gain. So here's the SM7B again running directly into the Rodecaster Pro 2, no booster, 58 decibels of gain. So I hope you have gained some insight into how good the Revolution preamps are in the Rodecaster Pro 2. I think it is an added benefit that I didn't mention in my earlier videos. If you are somebody who uses a lot of dynamic mics with the Rodecaster and you're thinking, oh, I don't know if it's worth the money, the fact that you might not have to spend $400 or more for four boosters for your Rodecaster Pro or whatever mixer interface you're using, I think is a huge benefit to the Rodecaster Pro 2. Some of the other mixers that I've compared the original Rodecaster to, wait, the original Rodecaster also to, like the Mixcast 4 and the Zoom Podtrack P8, those also had 76 decibels of gain, but it was nowhere near as clean as the gain on the Rodecaster Pro 2 is, where adding in boosters really does add noise to your signal. So it's not even a case of better be safe than sorry. Like you really shouldn't be using these with the Rodecaster Pro 2. That makes your setup more affordable, simpler, easier to use. The whole thing is just absolutely awesome. Speaking of gain, thank you to all of the channel supporters I've gained through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you haven't seen my other Rodecaster Pro 2 videos, be sure to check them out right here.